Hello, this is Inside the Press Box with Sunil Sundaraj for the Everyday Fan Sports. I'm happy to be speaking with uh, New Jersey Jackals uh, catcher Jason Agresti. Uh, Jason, thank you so much uh, for taking some time out to speak with me uh, this morning. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Sunil. Hey, congrats, Jason. Uh, I, I mean, so far this year, the 2021 Frontier League uh, for the Jackals, uh, you know, the team is 16 and 11. Um, you know, personally, uh, Hitting uh, 366, I think third in the Frontier League, three homers, 18 RBIs, uh, 18 runs, uh, scored 30 hits, seven doubles, uh, a 561 uh, slugging percentage, and a 457 on base. Um, I mean, can you talk about this start? I mean, getting off to this type of hot start, I mean, you got to feel good, you know, at the, you're feeling really good at the plate, uh, Jason. Yeah, no, definitely feeling good. I'm not trying to worry about the overall product. Though. I'm, you know, pretty much taking it day by day, day at bat by at bat. Um, if you look, start looking at the uh, or start worrying about the final product, it's going to, you know, drive your head insane. So if yeah. you take it piece by piece and uh, just at bat by at bat, not, not get too, you know, overwhelmed by anything, not trying to do too much of the plate. Um, it just really simplifies things. So that's really my my approach this year, and it's uh, it's been working. So... You know, going forward, that's that's going to be what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. Hey, first year in the Frontier League, uh, Jason, um, you know, after last year you played in an All-American Baseball Challenge, and you did very well there. I mean, 21 games, 320, uh, one homer, 12 RBIs, 24 hits, uh, 12 runs scored. I'm wondering, like, you know, just as far as uh, training and your approach, you know, to this first season, if you can talk about the, the, the level of competition in the Frontier League as well, uh, Jason. Um, well, I mean, in terms of training, like, like I was just talking about, just trying to take things, you know, piece by piece, not get too overwhelmed. Um, you know, hit, hitting such a mental thing as well. Uh, and maybe even more than just the physical aspect. So in terms of training, you want to also challenge your mind, you know, get off, uh, you know, work on the T, work on BP and whatnot, but also see some machines, see as much, you know, game-like situations that you can. I think that's a great way to, you know, replicate, you know, a, a pitcher thrown to you without an actual pitcher thrown to you. So that's kind of been my approach um, with, with my off-season training and whatnot. Um, in terms of the frontier uh, competition level, it's very similar to the Can-Am. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing that, that sticks out off the bat in the first, you know, month or so is uh, y you obviously have a lot more rookies. It's It feels like a younger league than the Can-Am. Mm -hmm. The Can-Am had a lot of, lot of experienced guys. You didn't have a cap on, you know, how many experienced players and veterans you could have. Obviously, in the Frontier League now, you need, I think, 10 rookies on the roster. Back in the Can-Am, you needed, like, four or five. Yeah. So – you know, it's definitely a younger league, but the competition's great. You got a lot of talented, talented players, a lot of talented arms. So uh, it's not, been nothing but positive so far. That's, that's wonderful. I wanted to uh, ask you about this team. It said 16 and 11 um, in the Northeast Division. It said, uh, I think, about a game and a half back behind uh, the Sussex County Miners. Uh, this team, this lineup is. Dynamic. I mean, hitting 289, I think, is overall uh, batting average, 167 runs, 260 hits, 57 doubles, 26 homers, and 152 RBIs. Uh, some of the guys, there's, there's Russ Olive, I think, who's hitting 344. Uh, you got Santiago uh, Torino, Todd Isaacs, and seven games only with the team is hitting over 400, uh, uh, Jason. You have Stanley Espinal and uh, Dalton Combs. Can you talk about just this overall lineup? I mean, you know, producing, you know, said uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, I mean, our lineup is, I think, as dynamic of a lineup that I've been, I've ever been in. I mean, there's no easy out, one through nine. Anybody can put the ball out, um, out of the ballpark. I mean, it's it's truly impressive, and I think um, it, it's really kept us in a lot of games and, and won us a lot of games. Yeah. You know, I think one thing that, that's got to get figured out for us. It's just, you know, our starting pitching, our starting pitching has been a little shaky as of recent, but I think, um, I think guys are coming around. I think guys are accepting their roles and I think that we're going to start turning that around. But if we can, if we can figure that out along with the lineup, that's just, it's a scary, it's a very scary team. Yeah.
Hey, talk about uh, playing Yogi Berra Stadium and then, uh, of course, our manager, uh, Brooks Carey, uh, Jason. Uh, I mean, lo love playing at Yogi Berra. We got, you know, I think one of our most electric nights is definitely the Thirsty Thursdays nights. We got a, <laughs> get a pretty rowdy crowd, and that's, yeah. that's a ton of fun. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a good environment. And then playing for Brooks is just it, – it's – Incredible! I love playing for the guy. He's a great manager, great, great game manager, um, great person. So it's nothing but positive there. That's great. I wanted to ask you. Um, I said you've played in the Can Am League, and uh, you know, I said uh, I, the first time around, you know, you played for Rockland, but then uh, that 2018, but 2019 for the Jackals. I mean, you, you know, you uh, I said hit pretty well there. You know, I said uh, were able to contribute. I'm wondering what you learned between 2018 and then, of course, the that first year uh, with the Jackals as well, uh, you know, in the Can-Am League, uh, Jason? Well, I mean, 2018, I graduated college in, in end of May, early June, and then got signed to Rockland probably yeah. a week or two after that. So, I mean, that, that 2018 season, I got a decent amount of reps in, and that was really, you know, getting acclimated to – the differences between college baseball and pro baseball. There, there are a ton of differences. You know, I, I can't even, I, I can list a few, just, you know, everyday preparation. You're playing every day. You're not going to classes. Yeah. I mean, it's just baseball is now your job. And that takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, and then coming into 2019, I already had, you know, half three quarters of a season under my belt. So I felt more comfortable. Um, still had to win a job here in here in jersey yeah um got off to a slow start with the bat but uh i uh i turned that around and then you know won the everyday catching job and and then we won a championship that year i mean 2019 is a year i'll, I'll never forget it, it was a blast a ton of fun and uh we had a great team as well hey what i mean we talked about it before we came on the air i mean the battles you know between the boulders and jackals but <clears throat> you developed a, a nice rivalry with the Sussex County Miners as well. I mean, so what, I think a couple of years ago, uh, teams battled in the championship series. Uh, can you talk about, uh, you know, playing against, you know, the Miners as well? Uh, and just, you know, I said, oh, hold on, sorry about that. With, um, with the Frontier League as well, you've got now to play some teams, you know, from some of the other divisions as well. But can you talk about playing uh, 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 the Miners, uh, Jason? Well, I mean, Sussex is obviously – just like the Boulders, they're yeah. pretty close to us. We're about 40, 45-minute drive. So, yeah. it's a close rivalry. We, rivalry. we play each other so many times throughout the season. So, you know, you, you get very familiar with the guys, you know, uh, the, their lineup, their pitching staff. So, I mean, when, I feel like whenever you play teams that often – there does just develop naturally this this competitive nature that I mean we're all competitors out there so this rivalry builds and uh, it's fun to compete in. Um, but yeah, they're they're a great team. They got a good team going this year. We've only played them twice, I believe, so far. But coming July, I think we play them. You know, a series week, so we'll definitely definitely be seeing more of them. Hey, talk about playing that. You know, it's such a condensed schedule when you think about it, Jason. You know, what ninety six games in a span of, what, four and a half months, not even five months. I'm talking about that, you know, the rigors of playing, you know, I mean, you're playing, what, six out of seven days, you get that Monday off. But uh, can you talk about that grueling stretch and how you keep yourself, you know, said, again, mentally and physically, you know, sharp, you know, throughout the course of a season? Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's definitely a grind. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's 96 games in just about four months. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it takes a little bit, a little bit of getting used to, but, yeah. you know, probably about two weeks in, you start hitting a stride and you find your routine mm -hmm. and it's just, it, it's pretty much that finding your everyday routine, you know, getting comfortable with it. And then, I mean, talk to go back to what I talked about in the beginning, you know, taking it day by day, mm -hmm. you, know, if you, if you start getting, you know, worried about the grind, you start, start you know, worrying about what's co what's coming in the future, then you, you you can you can lose your mind. So it's really just taking it day by day, sticking to your routine, and uh, not getting carried away with it. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you. You know, uh, being uh, playing, you know, I said uh, the catcher role. You know, and also you've been to DH as well. But 
Uh, talk about that. You know, some of the, uh, again, some of the things that go into playing, uh, being a catcher, you know, there, there's quite a, a bit of responsibility there. Uh, so with the pitching staff, can you talk, just dive into that as well, Jason? Yeah. So, um, I mean, being the everyday catcher, it's, it's, it's a, a definitely a wear on your body. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you feel it day in and day out. But I mean, like I was just talking about finding finding an everyday routine yeah. where, you know, at, as sore as you are, or as banged up as you are, yeah. you go through, you know, whatever process that you have to go go through to get your your mind and your body right. For that uh, for the nine games that not, or sorry, that that nine in a game, you know, uh, day in day out. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's definitely it definitely takes a toll on you, but. You know, Brooks is Brooks is pretty good about you know if you need an off day, then you know you, you'll get that off day to get your body right. Um, but yeah, it, it it takes a toll, but you know you can't you can't worry about the uh, the big picture at that point. You kind of just got to take it take it game by game, yeah, and uh, get it figured out. Yeah, you know, something popped into my head, uh, Jason, about team chemistry. Like you know, I said. Before, you know, training camp and then as you, you know, you know head into the regular season now here, road trips. I'm wondering, you know, take everyone uh, behind the scenes, you know, just as far as, you know, you know, because that's important for a team, you know, as I said, to be on the same page, you know, as you said, 96 games in, you know, about four months. I'm just wondering about this team, you know, what uh, makes it so special? Uh, you know, I, I know we're still early in, but, you know, just, you know, you, again, I, I think you've been... You know, you being a seasoned vet, you know, just uh, can you uh, uh, describe that? Well, this team right now, it we kind of gelled, you know, in spring training. It, it kind of feels like we got just a really good group of guys. You go, yeah. you, you know, talk about Torino, Marte, yeah. you know, Russ Olive, Dalton Combs, Stanley Espinal, Todd Isaacs, Demetrius. Yeah. Um, you know, just really good group of guys. Yeah. Um, and uh, not a lot of egos on the team, which is, which is really nice. You know, yeah. you don't have to, you know, worry about like any of that, you know, behind the scenes stuff going on. Yeah. I mean, when when you're with each other day in and day out, it uh, it's tough. You know, when you're dealing with the same people every every day, um, it could potentially, you know, take a toll on you. But with this team, I don't see that happening. That's great. You know, Man, what like I was that? saying. Just yeah. a, a ton of great guys. Yeah. Just a ton of great guys, and, and they're easy to deal with, and they're fun to be fun to be around. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I wanted to take it back. I've got a couple more. Can't thank you enough for the time, Jason. Definitely mm -hmm. big, big uh, University. Uh, what you were able to do there, you know, as far as uh, uh, during the course of your four years there, especially um, your senior year, I said you were able to uh, definitely, you know, you started all 45 games there. Uh, uh, can you talk about your time there? Uh, you know, I said the stats you were able to put up and, uh, you know, you were not only able to do it on the field, but off the field as well, uh, academically too. Uh, can you talk about your time there? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I mean, Binghamton was definitely a special place. Um, met a lot of, a lot of great people there, you know, friends for life, relationships for life. Um, my, my teammates are some of the, some of the best friends that I'll ever have. Um, my coaching staff over there with uh, Coach Ryan Herba, um, Skipper, um, Tim Sinicki, uh, Mike Foley, Foles. Um, I think they're arguably like the best coaching staff in the country. Um, you know, what they can do over there year in and year out by not just producing ball players, but also mm -hmm. producing, you know, men, yep. you know, they, they do a great job of developing you as a per person, you know, on and off the field, making sure you get your grades up, make sure you're on top of uh, your schoolwork. Um, so I think that's what, and, you know, uh, not just a baseball player, but also a person. And, you know, I, I can't speak highly enough of, of that school. I think it's, it's a great place. I would recommend anybody, to to take a look at it that that wants to play ball. I mean, it truly is. A, it's a great place, and I I'll never trade that experience for anything. Hey, a couple of accolades I wanted to you know point out uh, at Binghamton. Uh, uh, senior year, uh, 
the Jake Pitler Award winner for career uh, leadership and achievement. I mean, what, what did that mean to you, uh, Jason? I mean, quite honestly, I, I going into that, like the award ceremony, I wasn't expecting anything. I didn't, yeah. you know, need an award yeah. or I didn't need, I, I didn't need any of that stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to, to say that I have, it's, I, I was honored to get it, Yeah. but you know, I just, I had such a great time there. I, uh, I just tried to bring the same uh, leadership and energy to, to games and practices and, you know, be a leader, not, not just vocally, but also through my actions. I want to lead by example. I mean, one of my, one of my idols is Derek Jeter. And I mean, that dude, if that's, if he doesn't embody lead, you know, leading by example, I don't know who does. So uh, that's kind of just what I try to do day in and day out. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be honored with that, with that award. Um, but like I said, I, I didn't need any of the, I didn't need, I didn't need any of the awards. I was, I was honored, but, um, that's not what I, that's not what I was trying to go for. You know, that wasn't one of my goals. You know, one of the things that stood out looking at your stats, Jason, you know, during your time there in college is that, uh, at Big and Ten is that your durability on the field. I mean, the amount of games you were able to start, you know, I said and playing was just, just outstanding. And, and how many multi-hit games, but I I, I'm sure one memorable moment that really sticks out to you, I think uh, sophomore year uh, hitting a walk-off home run against, you know, Hartford, uh, you know, said at the end of the America East, uh, I don't know if that was the America East tournament. Can you talk about how, how cool that was, uh, Jason? Yeah, I mean, that's when you talk, when you look back on your career and you think about all the, all the special moments, that's at the top of my list. Um, to be able to come back from, uh, a six nothing deficit in the in the bottom of the ninth inning, yeah. and to be able to to you know hit a walk off grand slam in a situation like that was incredible. Um, you know, I I think it goes without saying, but you know, it, it wasn't just me that did that. You know, our team was an incredible team. We had a great great year that year back in uh back in 2016. We ended up going to the Texas A&M regional, but. You know, our our lineup and our team, that, that's what got me in that position. I was, you know, if it wasn't me that hit that, that walk-off, it was going to be Paul Rufo, who was in the on-deck circle, you know. So one through nine, that, that team was just an incredible team. Um, yeah. That's great. You know, you talked about making that transition, you know, from college ball to, you know, pro ball. But I wanted to ask you from – High school, you know, to uh, college. I mean, freshman year, uh, named to the All Rookie Conference team and second team America East. I'm wondering how, how you know, when you look back, you know, at your freshman year, you know, what that did for you personally, and then you know, again, you were able to, you know, definitely, you know, sit improve significantly as uh, you know the years went by, uh, Jason. Yeah, I mean, my freshman year, it definitely wasn't the, you know. Uh, best freshman year that that anybody would <laughs> yeah. dream of you know but it was a, it was a stepping stone you yeah. know it it put me in the position for for further success because I knew that I had to learn I knew that I had to develop more I uh my job wasn't done you know I had to I had to I had to, I had to be better yeah. so you know I I I took that as motivation and uh worked my butt off to to put together, you know, better seasons going forward. And I think I did a did a fairly good job of that. But the transition from high school to college, I think, is actually a tougher transition than it is from college to pro ball. Um, the speed from high school to college, it just yeah. – it, it speeds up. So the game just speeds up so much faster. I mean, you think about a like a high, a high school team – you got maybe one to three kids that are going to go on to the next level and play play college ball. Yeah. And uh, in college, every single player on your roster is that one to one or one to three kids on their high school team that went to play college. So you know they're all studs, and uh, yeah, the game the game just kind of picks up on you, and you got to find a way to slow it down. But. Uh, I would definitely say that that transition is a tougher one than than the college to pro ball one. Yeah. Okay, from Yorktown Heights, uh, New York, attended Kennedy uh, Catholic High School, and uh, again, this 
amazing, you know, what you were able to do there. You know, I said two years as a captain, hitting 410, you know, 15 homers, 125 hits, 94 RBIs. Uh, you know, first team all New York City as a senior, three year all league, two year all selection. When, when you, uh, I know it's, it's a while back, but you know, when you look back at uh, Kennedy Catholic High School, what comes to your mind, uh, Jason? Um, I mean, s similar to college, you know, I, yeah. I made some great friends, great friends in Kennedy that, that all, you know, have for life. I had a great coach and coach Bob Fletcher that, you know, he was quite honestly, it was the reason why I went to Kennedy. You know, I wanted to be in a situation where baseball was, you know, a priority. And I knew that he took it super seriously and that's exactly how he is. He's a very intense coach but he pushes you, he pushes you to get better and he holds you to a high standard because he knows that, uh, that, you know, that's where you should be. So, uh, I mean, unfortunately we weren't able to, you know, win a city, city title or a New York state title, but, you know, I actually had a, like a unique four years there because my freshman year we were, we were in uh, section, section A or section one B league and then sophomore year, we were an A. And then junior year, we were double A. And then senior year, we were in the Catholic school league. So every year, we were just in a different league, um, kind of working our way to that Catholic school league because that's where, you know, ultimately Coach Fletcher wanted to be. It's, you know, playing with wood bats, not, not metal bats. So yeah. um, he felt like that was that was good competition to be facing. Um, but, yeah, Kennedy was a great experience. Um, definitely a stepping stone that uh, put me into the, the person that I am today and as well as, you know, put me on the path that I that I went on. And, uh, you know, I, I was reading up on uh, the notes. I mean, 2014, you were on the MLB, you know, team draft board. First honor student for, of excellence or academic achievement, recipient of the Bryce uh, Joyce Memorial Award. I mean, I, I mean, it's not easy. You know, I, I've always asked, you know, athletes, whether at the high school or college level, you know, to, to balance out both academics and athletics is not an easy, you know, uh, uh, task, but you were able to do it. I, I had to ask you about that, Jason. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, one of one of my uh, my parents set me up, you know, set me up for it and I've ingrained in my head is, mm -hmm. you know, as, yeah, as as much as it to say, but academics come first. <laughs> um, it is student athlete, not yeah. athlete student, yeah. right? But uh, no, you know, as as much as as much as you love being on the field and whatnot, yeah. you can't be on the field if if uh, if you don't have your grades, yeah. you know. So uh, if you want to be on the field, you got to get your grades up. So uh, just just that, and then you know, one of the skills that you learn along with that is time management. Yeah. You know, time management. It is it's 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 very important in being a student athlete so if you can if you can manage that it's 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 a tough tough skill to learn but if you can manage that at a young age then it sets you up for a lot of uh a lot of future success because you know other, other kids don't learn it you know at that young of an age so uh that's a, that's a huge skill to to take seriously so uh i mean yeah just pretty much that, you know, be, being able to manage, you know, schoolwork as well as, you know, games and practices. It's tough, but if you can get that done, you'll you'll have success. No, well, it's, it's well said, you know, again, in case it doesn't work, you have a fallback option, you know, as far as, you know, a career. Hey, I just have a couple more. Um, you talk support from your family. I don't want to forget that, you know, your parents, if you have any siblings, mm -hmm. if you know, just want to talk about that as well, uh, Jason. Yeah, I mean, my parents are probably the the reason why, you know, I've had success. They, they've they molded me into the person I am. They've given me all the, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They've given me kind of like the direction to go on. They've given me all the support that I've needed anywhere that I wanted to go, anything I wanted to do. They were, you know, they were right behind me. They would, you know, I see it right now with my younger brothers, you know, in, in high school right now, going to all the Diamond Nation and the perfect game tournaments down in Georgia and yeah. all this stuff. My parents never complained about it. They would hop in the car at five o'clock in the morning and drive us to our 
8 a.m. game at, you know, where, wherever it was. And, you know, you never heard them complain. We would be the ones complaining because we're like, oh, we don't want to get up at, you know, <laughs> 5 o'clock in the morning to do this. <laughs> but, I mean, they're, they're troopers, and they're definitely the reason that that I've had, had this success. And, and, you know, along with my younger brother right now, too. Yeah. Hey, uh, for you um, personally, Jason, what makes the game of baseball so sp special to play? And growing up, uh, were there any other sports you played? But, you know, when did you know that baseball, look, is, uh, you know, your true passion that, you know, you would be good at? Um, uh, I think I was about two, two or three. And my parents tell a story where we went to, like, a, a Hudson Valley Renegades game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they weren't sure how long I would, you know, sit there and, and cooperate. Um, and they said, like, the whole nine innings, I sat there, you know, silent, didn't really complain about anything and just kind of watched the game. So yeah. I don't remember it, but, you know, I, I, I guess that was that was the first sign that that baseball was, a, you know, was, was an interest to me yeah. and a passion. And, uh, you know, I played some basketball when I was was younger and, like, fresh, freshman year of high school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Played a little soccer when I was younger as well, just as, you know, I probably I think I quit when I was like 10 or 11 or something like that. But, uh, yeah, baseball was always number one. It was, there was never real competition about it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was the primary passion. And I think that's when that's when it started back at that, that when I was two or three at that <laughs> Hudson Valley Renegades game. Uh, that's, that's neat. Um, all right. Uh, final question is um... – what is your advice for, for younger kids, athletes, you know, that want, you know, one day want to be just like Jason and Gretzky, you want to be playing, you know, I said, uh, you know. In the um, the advice, the one piece of advice would probably, you know, something along the lines, like keep, keep your head down, keep grinding. It's not going to be easy all the time. The path, the path to success is in a straight line. You know, it's going to be very crooked. It's going to go in a bunch of different directions. But if you keep moving forward, keep your feet moving, you're going to find success at some point. You know, it's it, it can be a, gr a grueling haul at some times. It, it can, you know, knock you down multiple times. But if you keep getting up and you don't let it take advantage of you, then success will find you. Great. Okay, Jason, the floor is yours. If there's anything I've left out, you know, and you want to add, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to. I I don't think I have anything. I think we, I think you touched you touched on a lot of things. You had, a, you had a, a wide range of going going all the way back to high school. You know, <laughs> touched, touched a lot of topics. Hey, a true honor and privilege, you know, speaking with you. I said uh, it's been great to follow your success, you know, in the Can Am and you know Frontier League and. You know, wishing you, you said, uh, continued success and all the best with the New Jersey Jackals, you know, this season, uh, Jason. Thanks, Sunil. Thanks for having me today.